So today I wanted to talk about something a little different and base it around creativity and not necessarily talk about just a lot of the life things that we talk about, but I guess it does have a big thing to do with this. And you know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping because of today's talk, I'm going to put this out there. I would love the man that I'm going to introduce to you. His name is Stephen Key. I would love for him to make a comment on this. That's what I would love. I'm going to put his name in the tag and I'm going to see what happens because, because of him, it is I am making this video. And today what I want to talk about is licensing and the key to licensing and having an idea and going with it. Now, let me tell you just a little bit about Stephen Key. Stephen Key, I, I've always been interested, as you guys know, with many different uh, topics. I believe in the value of your artwork. I believe in maintaining rights. I believe in just putting, building your brand and putting things out there and seeing what happens. That's been what we talk about. We just kind of want to move forward in our careers. We want to create stuff. We don't want to be uh, just dictated and told what to do our whole lives. We got to use our creativity. And so many of us out there, we're creative. I don't care what it is that you do. Maybe you're not the greatest draftsman in the world, but the reality is you have ideas. And maybe you want to be a product designer. Maybe you want to make props. Maybe you want to do all these things. And it happens all the time. And you know what sort of sparked this a little bit for me? was when I watch some feature films and I look at these, these things that are created, these throwaway gags, and they're like these little inventions. And they were even used in cartoons, right? We were used in cartoons for many years. You're watching Roadrunner, you're watching Bugs Bunny, you're watching all these things. And these cartoonists come up with these clever little gags, these clever little ideas, but they were just used for that one-time thing, for a gag in a cartoon. Otherwise, you made this cool little invention of an idea that the cartoon character grabs and uses, and nothing more comes of it. But it was a brilliant, ingenious idea that now, actually, you know who owns that? The animation studio owns that idea, not you. When you were the creative storyboard artist, character designer, prop designer that came up with this idea and thought about the gag, how it works. So this is where licensing and the invention idea comes into play, okay? So because of this fascination, and I've always been an inventor too, I really have, I, I well, I've, I've, like Stephen Key talks about is a, uh, I don't know that I'm going to use the right word here, uh, but is a product developer, okay, that's what we are, we're product developers. And so I've always been drawing these ideas on the side. I got scrapbooks of just my ideas because I want to keep it all there. This has been going on for years. I, am I, uh, who knows? Maybe I could be Leonardo da Vinci and I was just reincarnated. I don't know. But see, the thing is, just like Leonardo uh, da Vinci coming up with inventions and ideas and thought of really the first helicopter and many other inventions, um, you got to put these things down because uh, it serves a purpose. So that's what I've always done. And I know you guys have them too. You got those little invention ideas that you want to put down on paper, you think about, but you don't know what to do with it. So this is where taking ideas and just researching it and putting more time, energy, and effort into it and stop talking about doing stuff, but start making stuff happen and start doing it. Taking action is the number one key that most people don't do because all people do is talk about it. One day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to create that. And they just don't. And this is where it's up to you to take it to that next level. So through this curiosity of mine, I start researching. Okay, how do I, how do I come up with an idea? How do I get a patent? That's what my first question was because I thought, oh my God, I, I you got to protect yourself. It's like having a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA in the entertainment industry. Whenever you're going to be doing work for an animation studio or anyone else, or a film studio, or a book company, publishing, licensing. You got to sign an NDA a lot of the times, okay? 
So I started to research a patent. How do you get a patent? If I'm gonna show my ideas to people, I need to protect myself. So I started looking at that, and this was a long time ago, so all the information that's out there now wasn't available on the internet like it is today. So um, the book that I discovered and found was a book called, uh, uh, by Stephen Key, okay, P-H-E-N, spelt just like me, and it's called One Simple Idea. And I picked up that book and I read the book and I was just like, wow, what a great concept. Didn't think about that. And so what the whole concept is, is what Stephen Key talks about. And he's got a great YouTube channel if you guys want to just subscribe. And I would love the fact if all you guys subscribed at one time and all of a sudden he goes, where the hell did all this come from? And he tracks it down to me and he goes, who's this guy? Stephen, if you're watching this, I'm a guy you need to know. I'm a guy you need to get introduced to. I'm a guy that we can work together on stuff because I know you don't draw, but I can draw and I have a lot of ideas too. So um, just get, you know, and he, the name of his site is called Invent Right, um, and you could subscribe. So Invent Right, and he's got, got a bunch of little videos, five minutes, and so informative. It just gives you the basis, but I want to share some of you. So I'm not telling you that I've done a lot of other research. It's not just Stephen Key. So I've look, looked at a lot of other research into patents and provisional patents, and I've gone to the websites and I've discovered different attorneys and different things. So I've gone through it all, but I love Stephen Key because. I love his energy and I love uh, what he's doing and I love his simple philosophy and idea of the stuff that he's done. So the idea is when you come up with an idea and this is what I want you to do. And this, again, I'm telling you this because I am going through right now. People ask me what I do all the time. I do 50 billion things, but one of the things I'm doing right now is I am going to be filing for my provisional patent application and I am going to be submitting one of my inventions. Again, I got a lot, but I'm going to, I'm focusing on one right now. I'm going to submit one of my product developments, not invention. Stephen Key says, don't tell people you're an inventor, you're a product developer. I am going to submit one of my product developments to Procter & Gamble because there's a lot of industries out there which are looking for what's called open innovation, okay? They have open innovation programs. Now, what is that? A lot of people, companies have research and development, R&D, okay? And what's happening is they, they're a little room of people. They got five, ten people, if that, just trying to come up with ideas. But who they rely on are the people that use their products all the time. And I'm a guy who uses a hell of a lot of products. And this is where a lot of my ideas come from because I'm using everyday stuff. And I go, God, there's got to be a simpler, easier way to do this. This is horrible. This is messy. This is this, this is that. It's got to be something easier. So I start researching, looking online. There's nothing. Okay, I don't find find it. If you want to go even further, you could go to like Google patent search and even just go beyond that. Once you start to really, first of all, always do a Google search. See if it even exists on the internet. Do an image search. Go, no, I don't see anything like it. Then you could do a Google patent search. So that's step number two and see if it's even around. So I'm going through these and I decide, so um, what they have is the, um, d uh, the, the, uh, uh, Development is the R&D, research and development, but open innovation. So what companies discovered is we, we, you know, we're relying on these guys, but you know, we need ideas from everyone. All these people have ideas. Everyone's got an idea and everyone has an idea on how to improve something. So why not just open it up to everyone? If the animation studios were smart, they've done it in the past. I know like Nickelodeon and places have done it, Cartoon Network, I think, um, have done this where just open pitches um, to that, where what they need to do is really make something a little bit more significant, like open innovation for all these people to really pitch and make it, design it and make it work enough to where they're protecting themselves too, uh, the animation studios, but really where they can take all these submissions and pitches on a daily basis to get the next best idea for a cartoon show where the person is protected who's submitting it and the company is uh, protected who's receiving it. Okay, listen, we got to, this is why laws are created. We got to, uh, goes both ways. So open innovation, these companies realize, you know, we want your idea. What do you have? What, what's a better way to make our product? Let us know. 
So you go to their websites and you start to research and you start going through their open innovation program. Again, most big companies have it and people love it. So many companies want to be involved in this. Every single industry has opened this up. The floodgates are open, guys. So if you have a, you're a product developer, you're a product designer, you have ideas, inventions, how far are you going to take it? So check it out. This is how simple it is. And I'm going through with this. So um, I hope to give you a, a great story at the end. I don't know how long it's going to take. Not this, but uh, in, by when I start pitching. So the first thing you need to do is get what's called um, a provisional patent application. And this, again, patents scare the hell out of people. and They're expensive. But a provisional patent application is not a patent, but basically it's an application that you can acquire through the, um, the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office. Okay, It can range anywhere between $65 up to like 100 and I think it was about 45 when I last checked, something like that. Okay, that's not a big investment of money. What that does is protect your idea for one year. And the interesting thing is the patent uh, office, they're not even going to check it. They don't even look at your uh, application at that point because they get so many, they can't be bothered until the time really matters. So if your thing's not perfect, don't worry about it. You know, you can have a little sketch, a little synopsis, a little idea. You write it down again. I'm not going to give you all the information. I encourage you to, you know, just research it yourself. Read Stephen Key's book. Learn about that and also just watch videos and research it again. This is, if you want to do something, don't just look to one place and one source to get all the answers because that's a lazy attitude. That's a, I'm hoping someone gives me all the answers so that I don't have to do any more work. And if you have that mindset where you don't want to do any more work, forget it. Game over. Don't even bother. Just don't even try. Try, okay, and I'm being honest with you and straight front. You got to be passionate about it and you got to be motivated about something, and that requires you doing lots of research and not being so damn lazy. All right, um, so the thing is, you do the, you file your provisional patent, okay, and you get that pretty quickly. Then, what you want to do is put together it's very much like the, um, the industry, which I talk about all the time, right? Where I talk about if you're pro promoting yourself at uh, conventions and doing stuff, you want to put together a one sheet. And a one sheet is where you're just kind of putting together your, um, and it's very common, what was uh, required in um, advertising for to get an agent, you put together a one sheet that goes into the resource books. And that one sheet tells your, your name, you know, your email, your address, and what it is you do. You show some of your artwork, a few pieces of your artwork. This is who I am. This is what you do. That's the exact same thing you're doing here. You're putting together a one sheet. Um, he calls it a sell sheet. I don't know if that's an industry term. You put together this sell sheet, and the sell sheet has to be very simple, just really simple. How, what, tell me, I want to be able to, it's like the elevator pitch. I want to know what this does quickly, fast, right? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, got it. Um, and you put together your little illustrations, step one, step two, so however you want to do it. You guys are artists, you guys can put it together yourself. And um, you put together this sheet and you have a little description, any for a little bit further description, and, and that's all it takes. And so I've gone to Procter & Gamble's website. I've looked at what they require. They just kind of want a provisional patent. They just want to know that. And that what that does, a provisional patent, it gives you the title. You can put patent pending on anything. You can say it's patent pending. What it does is give you one year to sort of pitch your idea around. After that one year, it vanishes unless you file for either a utility or a design patent. Okay, that's where it gets expensive and you gotta get a lawyer involved. Oftentimes, the end result is you wanna pitch your idea, hope the company likes your idea and have them deal with the patent because you honestly, you don't wanna have to deal with all that madness. There's so, see guys, there's so much information. There's so much information that um, I'm skipping around all over the place. But basically, you take your provisional patent, gives you one year. Again, you guys research it, learn more about it. I'm not gonna give you all the de details here. I'm gonna give you the gist. You pitch it to Procter & Gamble. You got your provisional patent. That's just one company. You pitch it to them. They love your idea. They get in contact with you. You've sent them the provisional patent. You've sent them the one sheet and maybe even a little video. You could do a little video too or a little write-up. Again, you guys are creative editors. We all do all this stuff. Um, do it on, you know, uh, iMovie or whatever you want. Make a nice little one-minute video. 
You put this stuff together, those items, and you send it long and you see if you hear back from them. You know, usually they say it takes about eight weeks to hear back from them. Maybe if they love your idea, you hear back sooner, but that's just one idea, one company. You can send it to tons of companies at once. See who gets back to you first with your idea. And the goal is, so here's the goal. Once you take your idea, you pitch it to them. They come back to you and go, hey, you know what, Steven Silver? We really think this is a great concept. We don't see anything like it. It's, uh, you know, you're answering questions like, what's the problem? What's the solution? You know, how, how is this different? You know, what, what, why is this different from any other products sort of thing? And you show them and you tell them in that your little one sheet and everything else and in the write up, just very quickly, simple. People don't have a lot of time, span or attention. And you find out what, you know, if they all of a sudden they call you back, Steven Silver, we love this idea. This is great. Let's talk. Okay, great. Let's talk. So talk, what's your intention? My intention is to work out a licensing deal with you. Yes, licensing. What is licensing? Where Ye will pay you a royalty on every single item sold. Ideally, I've talked about licensing before just for artwork and everything else. In general, you want to just try to get uh, the net, you know, if you can, the percentage from the net. And that's the final numbers after all their expenses and everything else. So if it sells for $10, which is the wholesale price, okay, um, in the retail store, that's, uh, but it costs them to the company to make it. And after all their expenses, maybe there's about $4 left, $3 left. So it's not really 10, there's like $3 left and you want 10%, you're getting 10% off of the $3, not 10% off the gross $10, because most people won't even give you that anyway. So you get 10% off the net, the final result, okay? Um, so the, these are a lot of things that I talk about in my class, if any of you guys study with me, um, I think it's very important stuff. And I think this is, so once you get that licensing deal, well then, you're, you're, I'm not dealing with manufacturing, I'm not dealing with marketing, I'm not dealing with any of this stuff because that company who you pitch to, hopefully you're pitching to someone who does what it is you're trying to do. So I'm not all of a sudden gonna go to um, a company that makes, I don't know, uh, bed sheets and that's their company. I'm gonna pitch them a whole plastic gadget um, uh, uh, stand for a tripod. What's the point of doing that? It's the wrong company. It's like you're, not, you're barking up the wrong tree. So make sure you're pitching to the company that maybe has the idea and even the, uh, the patents and everything already established. You're just improving upon their idea. And that's why they might like you a bit more. So you take your idea and you pitch it to them. You're about $150 in the hole. You know, you get your provisional patent. And you see what happens. And then from there, if they license it, then you can start to collect your money. Then you got to get an attorney because you got to have a licensing uh, agreement. You work out. You want to make sure everyone's sort of just checking with a fine tooth comb, making sure it's all good and the, the contract looks good. Um, that you have clauses in there. Stephen Key talks about it. Again, watch his shows that he has on InventRight. And just you look at that and he, he just talks about, um, uh, I don't know the name of it, but if they're uh, uh, redesign clause, like all of a sudden they take your product and they start to retinker with it and all of a sudden say, well, it's no longer your design anymore, but you wanna make sure you protect yourself from that. Again, are you gonna be take initiative? That's what all my art talks about all, all the time. Are you gonna take initiative? Are you gonna do something? Are you just gonna talk about it? Are you gonna do something because you can try it? And you know what? What's the point in all this? Is having a life of no regrets. And that's, I know how I wanna live my life. I know that I'm gonna leave this planet before I come back again. I'm gonna leave this planet with no regrets. No way, I am not gonna sit there when I'm 70, 80 years old, 100 years old and go, I wish I would have pitched my idea to such and such company. Why didn't I? What was I afraid of? So don't be afraid. Also, sometimes you just got to do it. Um, how do you know what's a good idea, what's not? Reality, how do you know what's a good pitch idea, what's a good show, what's a good animated property, what's a good product? We don't. We don't know any of this. We don't know what's good. We don't know what's bad. You just got to put it out there and, you know, that expression, you know, see what sticks, throw it up against the wall and see what sticks. And that's what you're just trying to do. So it's a numbers game. Uh, you put it out there, but that's what I want to say. So I'm hoping that Stephen Key somehow, some way has been able to watch this video um, and he approves of it. And um, again, I just want to share his book and the idea behind 
um, just having uh, an idea and, and running through it and dealing with that licensing. And you do this amongst all the other stuff you're trying to do. Like, oh, I'm not going into this full time. You know, again, I don't want to start manufacturing. I don't want to go to China. I don't want to start making product. I could if I wanted to. I've done it with my books. I've done it with other things. I could, I could, do, you could do anything, anything. That's the beautiful thing about this planet right now. We could do anything. You know, it's all at your fingertips. You just got to decide that you want to do it and you got to proceed, precede before you proceed, right? So you got to make sure you're putting, getting all your ducks lined up and preceding and then, then you can proceed into that next, uh, that place. All right. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I um, just want to let you know that my November 16th all-day character design workshop is uh, coming. So if you're interested, you can go to the link below and, and join that and be a part of the full-day workshop. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be inspirational, motivational. You're going to learn a hell of a lot. And that nighttime, we're going to be having a life drawing party um, at Titmouse Animation Studio. So please uh, be sure to register for that too. And that's on the link just listed below there. Uh, thanks so much. And uh, you guys make it a great week. Take care. Hello, this is Steven and I just wanted to tell you about this cool thing that I'm doing right now through my website at silvertunes.com. It's a Skype mentorship. In a sense, what I want to do is just talk to you, meet you, tell me about things that are happening in your life. See if there's anything that I could do to help you. I can look over your artwork, do your portfolio, and just maybe try to push you in the right direction that you want to take your life and your journey, all right? So you can go to silvertunes.com, go to classes, click on mentorship, and you can learn all about it. We can try to arrange a time, set up a date. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make it just very affordable just to open it up because I love doing this. I love meeting people from all over the planet. It's a really cool thing. And uh, with this technology, why not? So that's it. Thanks.